Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm here with West Brom reporter Matt Wilson. Matt, the last 12 hours or so, it's been Troy Deeney, Troy Deeney, Troy Deeney, Troy Deeney, Troy Deeney. And then Daniel Sturridge has come. Yeah, Daniel Sturridge, we're, we're hearing that he's a done deal now. He's, he's joined on loan to the end of the season. Um, and I must admit, I didn't see this coming. I, mean, you know, I, I heard earlier in the window that Albion's, um, the limit to their wage structure meant that they could possibly bring in someone like Danny Ings on loan. Mm -hmm. 70, 80,000 pound a week, but they couldn't bring in someone like Daniel Sturridge in a loan, 120,000 pound a week. But it seems that the deal has been structured in a way that they've paid Liverpool everything up front. So okay. they, they paid the loan fee and his wages all up front. So negating that um, or removing that issue, mm. and they've got Sturridge on loan until the end of the season. It's a fantastic bit of business. He's exactly what Albion need a proven finisher, hungry player who wants to play, wants to get first team football. Um, and especially in this, in this year, obviously we've got the World Cup in the summer, um, he's going to come in and, and, and he also offers something I think a little bit different to what we've got. You know, Rondon um, is a very different player to Rondon, he, you know, he, he's, he's that six yard poacher isn't he Sturridge? Um, he does sometimes drift out towards the left hand side. You could argue he's a bit similar to Rodriguez but um, I, I think he offers something a bit different to him as well. So um, yeah, a, a fantastic uh, coup, mm. it has to be said, considering the teams that are interested in him, Inter Milan, Sevilla, yeah. Roma, Newcastle. But Sturridge is, of course, from this area. You know, he was a former Villa youth team player, born in Birmingham, and uh, I think he, he, you know, that enticed him back down here. Uh, he wants to, uh, you know, come back to the Midlands and uh, rekindle his career. Uh, st still, a fair amount of money they would have paid Liverpool up front. You'd have thought. Yes, I think so, but that was never really the issue. I, from what I gathered, it was always about the wage bill. Um, so if they can skirt around that issue and um, do it in this way and pay it all up front then fair, fair play and, and you, you know hats off to the board and they've also got Ali Gabir in on loan to the end of the season uh, today which has been announced mm -hmm. um, he had his medical yesterday um, Sturridge has had his medical today or due to have it this afternoon um, so that's another bit that's another, another bit of business that I think is, is very shrewd you know look at the Hagazi deal when they got him in on loan in the summer uh, and then they made that permanent in December and Hagazi looks a snip at 4.5 million. Gabir, who's his, his defensive partner in, in, uh, in the Egyptian national team, is even less. They can, they can buy him um, in the summer for 1.1 million if he proves to be a success. You know, this try before you buy approach, I think, has uh, worked out really well. Daniel Sturridge, I mean, this is a fantastic coup for the club, for Alan Pardew and for West Brom. Yeah, it has to be said. I mean, the, the, the team that they've, they've beaten to his, his signature is, is fantastic. Um, and you know, Pardew and Nicky Hammond deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, obviously, we, you know, no signing is a success mm -hmm. before they've played, and we'll have to wait and see how he gets on. He's got some injury problems, as we know. Um, but I think this calibre of player, to, to, to entice this calibre of player to the club that is second bottom in the league, mm -hmm. um, speaks volumes. And I think they've done very well. Well, th that was what I was going to go on to next. I mean, we all remember Daniel Sturridge and the Luis Suarez partnership, and they were incredible. He has played very few games for Liverpool and consistently, game after game after game. Is Daniel Sturridge a person that is going to play most games, you think, if he's fit? Or is he going to, you know, are they going to have to look after him very carefully? Uh, I think it's interesting because obviously Rondon and Rodriguez have been fantastic mm -hmm. recently. So, I mean, you wouldn't want to drop any of them. But then Sturridge, yes. you know, he's got that poacher's mm -hmm. ability. Um, so, I don't know. He's, I think he's going to have to work quite hard to get into the team, to be honest. Um, you know, <laughs> unless Pod, unless Pod goes ultra attacking, but mm. I, you know, I think he's gonna have to work hard to get into the team. He's gonna have to take his chances. Mm. Um, that might suit him as a player. You know, you could you could argue actually because of his injury problems, give him a, a couple of substitutes appearances here and there. If he plays well, then give him a start. But he, you know, he, if he can't do the whole ninety minutes, we've got options. We've got Rodriguez and we've got Rondon firing on all cylinders. Of course, what you want is three strikers pushing each other, competition mm. fierce. Um, but yeah, the injury concern is the one, the, the, but mm. is the one, I suppose, the one issue. But I think because Ronald and Rodriguez are playing so well, it, 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 you, you sort of think, okay, well, it's worth the gamble. So now with Sturridge confirmed, does that mean that a potential move for Joy Dini will, will not happen now? I don't believe so. I mean, they, you could argue, well, you could still, because they've got Gabir in, you could still sell Evans to Arsenal mm. and get Dini in. Well, I mean, is that too many strikers? I, though? I mean, I don't know whether it's too many, but would, it depends what what you think. I mean, it, it depends what Pardew's thinking. If he thinks, well, Evans is going to go in the summer anyway, mm. um, what what's the best thing for the squad? I would argue that if you've got Sturridge in and you've got Rondon and Rodriguez playing well, actually, the best thing for the squad would be to, would be to keep Evans. Now, I've not seen Gabby play. Mm. I hold my hands up. Mm. So. 
if part of you've seen a bit of him, watched a few videos of him and thought, no, he's okay, we can let Evans go and get Deeney in, that's what we need, then that, you know, he, he'll have to live and, I suppose, live and die by that decision. I personally wouldn't do it. Um, I probably think they'll be inclined now to hold on to Evans mm -hmm. and, uh, and just go with Sturridge and uh, Gabby. But, and, and also Arsenal haven't actually come in with a bid yet, sure. so you know, we'll see what happens. They, they seem to be pulling out the race because of a Aubameyang, but um, it depends. If Arsenal come in with a massive bid, then sure. you have to listen to it, don't you? Well, look, if you keep Evans and you've got Daniel Sturridge and Gabby, I mean, what, what a fantastic window for Albion. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, it was something that I suppose it was, this is an eventuality that nobody really thought could happen. Uh, we all thought that they that they have to get rid of Evans to bring in somebody of Sturridge's calibre. You know, we thought, okay, they can get Gabby in. Nah, he doesn't cost too much. Wages won't be too much. Mm. That's okay. But to get someone of Sturridge's character over the line, nah, I mean, I don't think anyone was expecting that without losing Evans. So yeah, good business.